Arriving onto the big screen in late November of 1986, The Wraith was a supernatural revenge action thriller starring Charlie Sheen and a then number of lesser known actors, who some of which would go on to have successful careers in the industry after this low budget, now cult film was first released. However, over the years, the film's biggest star has been argued amongst the fans to be the 1984 Dodge M4S twin turbo PPG pace car that was used in the film and shown to be a supernatural manifestation of the lead character's means to seek out his revenge against a group of murderous street racers terrorizing the roads of Arizona. In 1983, a project was greenlit by American Fortune 500 company PPG Industries in a joint effort with Chrysler to design and build a car which was to showcase the full potential of a lightweight, aerodynamic body and a small block four-cylinder engine to be used as a pace car in the American racing circuit. For this, car manufacturer Dodge brought in chief designer Bob Ackerman to create this new project. Ackerman took inspiration from the Group C Porsche 956 race car and its teardrop aerodynamic design as his starting point. When it was determined that Chrysler could not provide a suitable chassis that could accommodate the needs to build the style of body Ackerman wanted, Ackerman decided to opt for another chassis after seeing a custom made one by Joe Hafficker in an issue of Sports Car Graphic magazine. Ackerman would then redesign his drawings to incorporate the Hafficker chassis and an arrangement was made to obtain the chassis that was later modified to have a longer wheelbase to further match the original car's overall design. The car ultimately cost $1.5 million to build and included a custom paint job costing over $30,000. One of the challenges was to get the small 4-cylinder 2.2-litre engine to reach speeds of over 200 miles per hour in order to show the efficiency of what was then in the States thought of to lack the speeds of the popular V8 engines of the time. With a hand-built body and shell, a 4 valves per cylinder engine with twin overhead cams and twin turbochargers, the Dodge M4S was a one-of-a-kind technological marvel of automotive ingenuity. The Dodge M4S Turbo made its first public debut at the Detroit Auto Show in January of 1986 that year and was a massive standout due to its unique styling design and overall appearance and a few weeks later was to be shipped to Arizona to be used in an upcoming Hollywood feature film. Once completed, the car was an engineering marvel to behold, as it was ultimately test track driven by Graham McRae, who was able to drive the Dodge up to 194.8 miles per hour on its initial test run, falling just short of its 200 mile per hour goal, yet accomplishing a great feat nonetheless. Although the Dodge ticked almost all the boxes Chrysler and PPG were hoping for, the car did not prove to be as popular among the automotive high brass as they'd had hoped, as it was barely mentioned or showcased on the covers of any of the popular car magazines at the time, and the car began to fall into obscurity due to this lack of interest among the public. I see this sort of a program as teaching the engineers that are designing the automobiles more than they need to know just for the road car, but uh, I think it is an advantage. Uh, I think if the limit of your engineering is what you see on the public roads, then at any one point you can be in trouble. Whereas if their engineering is far beyond what is needed for the public road, then I think you feel a lot safer. Nonetheless, the car was a great achievement of style and engineering and did gain the interest of certain car enthusiasts, some of whom were willing to trade in their Ferraris for the chance to own a then ahead of its time American track racer. 
Though it was never mass produced due to its high manufacturing cost, the designers at Dodge Chrysler had successfully done what they had set out to do and produce a sleek small block engine pace car with the 440 horsepower output range that was able to pave the way to show the potential and speed of a four cylinder engine which at the time was considered in the realm of fantasy, much like the film it was later set to star in. Though not happy at first when told, Ackerman showed dismay at the idea of his design to be used in a Hollywood film and feared his car would become a joke as it were, much like what happened to the Lincoln Futura when turned into the Batmobile in the campy 1960s television show according to Ackerman. This fear however proved to be misplaced as the car's popularity would only grow when it was to be used as the main vehicle of choice in the 1986 fantasy thriller known as The Wraith. Directed by Mike Marvin, The Wraith would tell the story of another dimensional spirit returning from the dead along with an extraordinary out of this world race car to seek vengeance against a gang of illegal street racers who had murdered him and who would go on using their cars to terrorize a small town in Arizona. One of the film's stunt drivers was veteran stuntman Buddy Joe Hooker who had made a name for himself in the film industry as a top stunt driver and who had been involved in one of the biggest car jumps ever put to celluloid at the time in the 1978 Burt Reynolds film Hooper. Buddy Joe has continued to work in the industry and continues to provide great stunt work on film due to his many decades of experience and dedication as a stuntman from a more rugged and real era of Hollywood that is not often seen anymore. With the story and need to see the car destroyed multiple times on screen and in extremely dangerous high speed chase scenes on public roads, a number of detailed replicas were created using the moulds from the original design according to the needs of the scenes involved in the film. Some cars were built on a Volkswagen chassis for the high speed driving, while others were simply hollow fiberglass shells used when the car was to be crashed into and completely destroyed and blown up. We had uh, several different replicas of the real car. So we had cars for towing in to blow up, cars that actually did the driving. We had probably six, eight different stunt cars. It is not known if any of these replicas had survived, though once production had ended, the original M4S was returned to Chrysler and its fame and popularity outside of racing had forever become synonymous with this film. When The Wraith was released in November of 1986, it came out to mostly negative reviews from critics and was not well received due to an unfortunate accident during production which led to the death of one of its crew members and injuring several others. I think part of with The Wraith it was just that it was the first of its kind. It was a car action gang, fast and furious. There was no attempt to try and do anything uh, any trickier than really hardcore stunts. Before we had CGI, everything was real. The director drew inspiration from a number of different sources, including George Miller's Mad Max in Mad Max 2, where he adopted the name Turbo Interceptor from as an homage to the main car used in those films driven by Mel Gibson. And then at the end of the day, it became a cult movie because people liked the movie, so they just founded on videotape. With a low budget of only 2.7 million US dollars, The Wraith would only go on to gross 3.5 million domestically at the box office. Part of this failure, it was thought, came as a result of a poor transfer from the master footage to cheaply produced reels that went out into theatres that resulted in a loss of quality of the film's sound design. When the film was released, Ackerman and other Chrysler executives went and saw the movie which showcased their vehicle. Part of the deal to use the design of the M4S was that the Chrysler logo and Dodge name was to feature prominently in certain moments in the film. One of the executives was so upset at the film that he got up and left the theatre during the screening. 
Its popularity did however grow once the film was released on VHS and gained a cult following over the years since. The film's fan popularity came mostly from the contemporary rock soundtrack and high-speed racing scenes that was done for real and all within camera, most of which was filmed in under 10 days given the tight restrictions of the film's production. Internationally, the film did well in terms of its popularity and revenue once it went to VHS and began to circulate across the globe. Its star went on to have a successful career along with several of its cast members including Cheryl Flynn and Nick Cassavetes who went on to become a well-known and successful director in his own right. The Wraith and its car chases, made possible by the likes of stuntmen such as Buddy Joe Hooker, is a testament to the hard work and dedication of the action film stunt people of the time and the film represents some of the best work available in Hollywood, where real drivers perform real stunts with little to no special effects required. With the film's production over, and its use as a pace card eventually coming to an end, the Turbo Interceptor, as it would forever be remembered, was eventually retired and was never made use of again in either film or the racing circuit since. Though never mass produced, due to its popularity, a number of fans of the car and movie over the years had sought out to make custom copies of their own. It was thought that the moulds used to create castings of the M4S were destroyed in order for the car not to be able to be copied and reproduced. According to sources, a fan by the name of Lyle Sir, however, eventually located the original moulds in a junk heap while trying to track them down and had since created a number of replicas for himself and others that have been touring across the US in car and movie shows. I did see the final film uh, years later. As I remember, it was great. I was happy with all the stuff we did. It was a, a good film. I think everybody in the film did a good job. Uh, the whole the storyline was great. And uh, I think the director achieved what he wanted to achieve. Though not winning at the box office or praised by critics at the time, The Wraith has become a staple in movie car chase history and its popularity among fans continues with newer generations of car and film enthusiasts discovering this forgotten gem. A sequel to the film had been planned and written by director Mike Marvin that would have brought back the M4S and was to be called Turbo Interceptor, which was the original title for the first film. However, as of 2020, nothing has come of these attempts to produce a sequel and a remake has been mentioned to be the preferred choice of continuation. As for the original M4S prototype itself, it has since undergone some minor changes over the decades mostly in its colour scheme, which was changed from its original root beer brown appearance to a now white gold look and now resides in the basement at the Walter P. Chrysler Museum in Michigan. Although many had seen the film as little to no more than a ridiculous B-grade 80s action movie at the time, it has since been agreed upon by Ackerman himself and others that were it not for the Wraith and its fast-paced racing scenes, the M4S would have faded into obscurity and would have become nothing more than a forgotten experiment in the American automotive history books. The Dodge M4S Turbo Interceptor still remains a triumph of ingenuity and automotive accomplishment in that it created an engine and body type of its size that was able to push the idea and boundaries of an efficient small block motor to incredible speeds and aerodynamic styling. As for the film, both it and the car have stood the test of time in popularity and are still talked about on news programs and car discussion channels as they are now both part of movie car chase history. <laughs>